Four o'clock. Good to have you aboard. Odyssey.com Rewind opened up with the disgrace that's the Pistons. Thank you, Bob. Excellent. Thank you. Um, let me let me take care of business. I, I was thrown off there by the bet medley. I'm so sorry. That's okay. Um, I addressed the Michigan stuff just because we weren't on the air Thursday or Friday. And again, I, I don't think this is over by a long shot. I, I It is my belief you'll have another staffer get got. And eventually, it won't be tomorrow or next week or next month, but eventually, yeah, I think I think you're going to get absolutely crushed. So enjoy your Thanksgiving and enjoy your game and pray to God you get everything done because I don't think you're going to like 2024. But whatever. Who the hell am I? Sparty Radio. Mm. Oh, that coffee's delicious, David really is. So enough about your school. Let's talk about mine for a second. I want to have some fun. Call it a week from today, maybe a week from tomorrow, but give or take, I think MSU is going to have a new head coach. They'll be at the podium. I don't know. Maybe a week from today doesn't stay play a basketball game the 28th. Does that sound about right? Maybe bring out the new coach at halftime. I'm about I don't do coaching searches, right? Like, I I don't really care about breaking news. It's not my role. I don't pretend. I'll talk in code to let you know when I know something. So, like, let's have some fun. I'm pretty, based on people I've talked to, I'm I'm pretty confident in telling you MSU's got two guys and the next head coach is coming from those two. No, it isn't going to be Harlan Barnett. No, it's not going to be Jason Candle. Otherwise, I want to give you the two people and which one will they hire? I don't get to do the second interviews, but I think it's one of these two guys. And I'll tell you this. I don't think either is a bad hire. I don't think either is some, some, some lowbrow thing to be mocked. I'm not going to do that. But what I'm also not going to do is sell you that it's a paradigm shifting, you know, seismic thing i will need to see the staff the nil plan etc okay i think there's positives and negatives the two guys are duke head coach mike elko and oregon state head coach jonathan smith i i think it is one of those two guys is going to be hired a week from today i do and I don't dislike either guy. It's no secret I like Oregon State. It's no secret. I guarantee you I've watched more Oregon State football than anybody. I've watched more than the search committee. So I don't dislike Jonathan Smith. But you want positives and negatives, and then I will will tell you, David, I need to know from Spartan fans if they're available to have a conversation. And you, does either of these guys excite you? Because my my thing is this, understand everything I say comes from a perspective of I don't care about winning eight games. I don't. I don't really care about winning nine. I care about an expanded 12-team playoff that I need to go 10-2 and two to probably get a piece of. So anything I say comes from a perspective of my belief is Michigan State should be contending to be in that playoff every other year. If you can't do that, you don't get my interest. Now, that doesn't, who am I? They don't cater to me. I only speak for myself. So let me take you through the two guys, and you can tell me, and I'm very familiar with both, so this is not hard for me to do. Um, I'll start with Elko. Positives. The good recruiter. You don't work at Notre Dame, albeit for a short time. You don't work at A&M. And you don't bring in a top 50 class at Duke if you're not a good recruiter. He's a good recruiter. I also think there's a little bit more of a translation for his staff. Some of them actually have some Midwest familiarity. It matters. Elko is a defensive genius. He is. It's just who he is. Go look at the data. Go look at what he did for Notre Dame. Go look at what he did for A&M. And go look at what he does at Duke. In-game adjustments, this dude's a beast. He's excellent. Quick turnaround with a bad program. But again, he wasn't there that long. That's the problem. How much am I sold that Elko can't just turn it around, but can grow it, can sustain it, 
Now, this team this year, they're almost as injured as Michigan State. MSU might take the field Friday night at Ford Field with like 39 scholarship players. <laughs> they don't have nothing left. Roberto's going to be playing defensive end. It's going to be exciting. <laughs> but the negative is this. He's not an offensive-minded coach. And in 2023, isn't that where the sport is? And MSU never really hires offensive-minded coaches. They just don't. The one time they did, it was John L. And all jokes aside, he was a goofball. But John L's offenses were really good. Really good. Uh, the Big Ten is not an offensive conference. Could that hurt you? Maybe. You do have a limited track record. He's only been at Duke a couple of years. And here's something that I would keep an eye on. And I am not pretending to be some insider here. I don't know Mike Elko personally, but I know people who cover college football and I know conversations I've had. I mean, Elko's time at Notre Dame, I think he asked for a raise three times in 18 months. High opinion of himself, which I actually respect. I don't know why you'd be a head coach who doesn't have this incredibly high opinion of your work. I would want to make sure he wants to be at state for the long haul. Okay. Let's go to Jonathan Smith. Now, this is a guy I'm super familiar with going back to when he played at Oregon State. He was on the teams with TJ Husmanzada, Chad Johnson, Ken Simonton, the Dennis Erickson Miracle Orange Bowl team, 41 9, Notre Dame. You hate to see it. Um, let me start with the good. Built the program from scratch. And he's been there. He has developed, as I've told you multiple times, one of the best offensive lines west of the Mississippi in one of the college badlands. You know, you can't find Corvallis with two hands and a flashlight. He's built it. He's an offensive mind, diverse scheme. It's rooted in running the football, but I love the way that they do it. They're very difficult to stop. Would it work in the Big Ten? Yeah. I love his defensive coordinator. Now, I don't know if you'd be able to bring the D.C. This Bray, uh, not Trent Bray. It might be Trent Bray. Um, their defense is all about havoc. Disguising, pre-snap candy, aggression. Um, I love it. Rico and I have talked about it since last year when I turned Rico on to Oregon State ball. Can you get the defensive coordinator to come with him? Here's your problems, though. He's quirky. And you're going to go, well, most coaches are weird. Look at Harbaugh. Noted. Bet, as Michigan fans like to say. But in watching Jonathan Smith, watching press conferences, watching him mic'd up, watching games, he's quirky. There's a little bit of John L. there. And I admit, I got a little PTSD. I don't do the quirky. The other problem is he's never been east of the Rockies. Coached at UW. Pasadena born and bred. OSU alum. That means you have to put a staff around this guy that has Midwest ties that can recruit. I think one of Mel Tucker's biggest failings is just not recruiting Ohio. You know what? Ohio State can only take so many kids. You need to get some of the guys that are aggrieved who couldn't be a Buckeye who want to bust their ass. Um, I would be concerned. I would need to hear Jonathan Smith's plan for how to address that. I Again, I don't get to do the interviews. Um, and the other thing is, and again, I wouldn't have the answer. It's recruiting. You're at Oregon state. You're not going to get access to big time players. It's really hard to do. Now I will tell you, he has a quarterback at, at Oregon state. I really like, and it's not DJU. He's got a true freshman. His last name is Childs. I think he's a California kid. He's one of the highest rated recruits to ever go to OSU. They play him one series in the second quarter and one series in the third. Wouldn't mind if he brought him with him. Um, Aiden Childs. Aiden Childs. Yep. Um, look, I think both guys are worthy of support. I don't think either's a bad move. I'm not going to slander Alan Haller. I think Alan's actually run a really good process here because there's not a lot of info. I'm pretty convinced it's going to be one of these two guys. But I'm not sure how excited I get. That's not a negative before some of you Spartans get all upset. I'm not knocking it. I can say, okay, like I can nod my head. It's like when Kenny goes, hey, this is what I'm getting for lunch. And I'm like, all right. I mean, that's not zippity doo It's the best idea I've ever heard. 
but they actually could be really good hires. Does either of these guys move the needle for you as a college football fan, as a state fan? 248 539 I think a lot of it will come down to what their strategy is, who the staff is, and what, if any, because I don't know if you heard, State had some issues with NIL this year. And we'll leave it at that. The point is, what type of payroll can I, can I put this team on? But I mean, David, Jonathan Smith, the offensive-minded coach who's never been east of the Rockies, but he's built a power-running game, churns out running backs. Or do you want the defensive-minded genius? Both guys are in their 40s. We're good there. Which guy? I'm going to say um, neither guy scare me. Um, the ties, the Midwest ties for Elko and his recruiting abilities, it's just what would the staff look like? And right now, I, I couldn't tell what it would look like. Yeah, so I'm like, not worried about it right now. Right. No, and listen. But Jonathan Smith, the offensive mind, would scare me, but he has no ties to the Midwest recruiting-wise. So as of right now, I'm like, okay, I, I just have to see it. Because he has no connection here. And here's the other thing. When you don't have any ties to an area, it's very hard to pick up the phone. You're not hiring a total stranger. Correct. I mean, the last time that happened, Tucker hired Scotty Hazelton. It's You don't just pick up the phone and go, hi, want to work for me? I don't know who you are. Correct. It's, it's, it's a fraternity of coaches. So, look, I think the next seven, I, I, think, I think in a week, you got a coach. Wouldn't shock me at all if we have a little fun and MSU's got a coach at halftime of a basketball game. I think it's Jonathan Smith or Mike Elko. I don't think that's any I don't think that's breaking news. I don't think it's some crazy thing. But I, I actually am quite familiar with both guys. I told you from the beginning, I'm not trying to make Mike Elko a thing. I'm tolerant of it, bordering on accepting. Does that mean I'm over the moon? No. Jonathan Smith, I like. I just don't know if it's a fit. Here. Yeah, he can build, but what are they giving him to build? Yeah, I have no idea. Yeah. 248 539 97